So thanks for spending time to be with us today. Uh, this course is Parature and Introduction. So um, my name is Paul Fisher. Uh, I've been a Parature consultant for more than two years. Uh, I've implemented probably about 14 customers uh, during my tenure here at Parature. And I work primarily in the public sector, but I do a lot of private as well. Um, I have a really cool deployments under my belt. Um, our Social Security Administration uses Parature for their self-service FAQs. Um, Georgia State, 1-800-GEORGIA, they're here. They'll be presenting as well with Parature people. And even GSU, right across the street, they're using Parature in their financial department. Um, I'm just super excited to be here because Parature offers a software package that through configuration and training and setting up, uh, I'm able to have a direct impact on my customers and the people that they serve. And that's really important uh, part of what I do. Here with me is uh, Eric McCurdy, and he's going to help me talk about the Parature experiment, experience through the customer side. So I wanted to introduce him. Thank you, Paul. I'm happy to be here as well because we have a pretty neat story to tell, and Parature is largely to thank for it. We have over 100 million monthly users around the world who come to our site and ask questions from a variety of cultures, variety of languages, variety of countries, and we were finding that our legacy CRM system powering our customer support was just not working, and it was not meeting a lot of expectations of our users. And so I went on a window shopping spree and got to know several different providers out there, and finally I cold called Parature one day because I really liked the kinds of things they were saying on their website and their philosophy. So I cold called Parature, and the rest is history. Within uh, months, we had replaced our legacy system with a brand new system that worked immediately the first day we turned it on. And I'm really happy to tell you a little bit about that as we roll through Paul's presentation today. Thanks, Eric. So I hope everyone's enjoying Convergence. Uh, we're super excited to be here. You know, three months ago, uh, we all sort of had our heads down. We're based out of Herndon. There's 100 of us. And we're cranking out new features. We're implementing customers. Um, we're scaling up all of our hardware to support all of these users. And uh, they bring us into a big room, and a bunch of Parature executives are there, and a bunch of Microsoft executives are there. And they announced to everyone that we'll be joining the Microsoft family. And we were like, whoa, this is awesome. Um, and it's really just going to take our products on the next level. So. I'm really happy to be here and be on the stage with you guys because we're really counting on you to help bring our, uh, our product to the next level. Um, we're, we're really looking to utilize all those resources for sure. So let's talk a little bit about Parature. Parature comes from this idea of paradigm of the future. So we believe we know what we're doing with customer service. Uh, we are, in fact, the leading provider of customer service. We have 70 million end users that we support. 3,000 brands uh, are a part of that. And what we do really well is this idea of multi-channel service. So we want to be everywhere that your customers are. And we do that through a bunch of Parature not modules, like chat, ticketing, the portal, um, through social media. And what we offer is a uh, software as a service um, idea where all you need is a browser to plug into Parature and interact with Parature. There's no on-site installations. And really our core competency is in the 10 years of experience that we have in this space. Uh, that's really what we bring to the table. So like I said, we have this new home with the Microsoft family and that's just going to be a great experience for us. There's a lot of smart people coming in and out uh, figuring how they're going to package uh, Parature and, and how to make it better. Uh, there's a lot of notable customer uh, service courses and tracks. If you guys want to come check that out to learn more about the product roadmap and, and learn how uh, we're going to be incorporated into Microsoft Dynamics. So my objectives for today is I want you guys to come away with an understanding of the Parature core features. I want to talk about the modules that Parature uses to deliver a customer service experience and a good one at that. And also, I want to be a resource here to answer a lot of your Parature questions. 
Um, everything's happening so fast, and I'm sure you guys are excited and anxious to get to know this product and what it's capable of. So definitely use me as a resource to, to be able to do that. I have my email up here. You can come grab me at the end of this, uh, this slide deck. So we're going to cover three main areas of the Parature suite. Um, this idea of self-service and our features around there. And that includes the knowledge base, the portal, and we're going to incorporate Ask.com's view in on that as well. Multi-channel customer service. We're going to talk about the Parature service desk, which is the admin panel. Uh, our live chat and briefly talk about ticketing. And then lastly, we're going to jump into the social side. So I'm going to show you the social monitor and how we interact with customers through social media. So the first topic I want to start with is this idea of Parature self-service. Now what is self-service to Parature? Well, it's a portal, it's a knowledge base, and it's a download module. I want to talk briefly just about Georgia State University. So they're right up in the street here. And we're plugged into their financial aid department. So before Parature, all they had was a ticketing system, like an actual ticket, where if I was a student, I would walk up grab a ticket, and wait for an agent to come work with me. Um, they didn't have sort of all these fancy tools that Parature provides. Um, after we took some time learning about their use case and uh, implementing Parature, we were able to set them up on a lot of cool features, one of which they leverage a lot is this, this portal, where their students can go out to the portal, interact, submit tickets. Um, they can interact with their knowledge base to see answers to uh, commonly used questions. And they could go out to the downloads and grab forms, um, status updates. And really, it's about tailoring Parature to fit the organization. And it was great. After they've been using Parature, you know, one of the managers grabbed me aside and said, Paul, like, you don't understand. We have all the resources now to be more consultative with our clients. Through these features, they're able to deliver answers quickly. Students can go out to the portal. They can look at the status of their ticket. They can action tickets. Tickets aren't being left underneath the, the bus anymore uh, like they did with that little ticket stub to be able to talk to an agent. It's freeing up a lot of time for them to be able to communicate effectively with students. And that's so important for students to, to have that interaction and get the answers that they need. So why, why self-service? Well. Um, Self-service is your 24-7 uh, customer engagement. It's always online. Now, how many people have, uh, have seen SNL this weekend update? Does anyone watch SNL? Seth Meyers has a great quote from that. It says, Toys R Us announced this week that its stores will remain open for 87 straight hours leading up to Christmas. Not to be outdone, the internet announced that it will be open all the time, always, forever. And really, that just talks to the portal in itself, is that it's a resource that's always open and it's always online, that you can have these answers out there for your customers all the time, and, and what a service that is to provide to your users. Um, like I said with the GSU situation, you know, you're driving down support calls, you're driving down those walk-up people coming up and grabbing a ticket when they have these resources. And in effect, it's increasing the support team efficiency. Um, through the software, too, it's a secure and central location for all the product services and information. And we're beginning to see, too, in this idea of self-service, that instant gratification is really the norm. And I think Ask.com has, uh, has seen this as well. Yes, the internet taught everybody that all information should be accessible all the time about a company's products, services, and that really became true in the realm of customer support. And nothing is more infuriating to a customer than not being able to get some kind of instant support right now. And instant gratification is the new concept, more, the newest concept and the most important concept that we're experiencing in terms of what makes users happy. Users will even accept an answer they don't want if they get it fast, and they're still happy about the experience. And self-service revolutionized that for us, because we didn't have that before. We didn't have a very good self-service system, quite honestly. We had great content, 
but it wasn't organized very well so that you could go and really find the answer you needed. Thus, you had to submit a ticket and wait for an email back. And even if, you, even if the answer was great, you were still upset. You had to wait a while to get it. So self-service is a phenomenal thing. Also, the other thing it drives down is the need to hire additional staff. At the time that we switched to Parature, the decision was hire more people to keep using this antiquated system to answer tickets around the clock or find a system that can help drive down the number of tickets and therefore not need to hire as many people. So we spent a little bit of money on Parature instead of a whole bunch of money on additional headcount. Thanks, Eric. So let's start looking at some of the Parature features with self-service. The first one I want to start with is the Parature portal, this flexible, scalable, central resource for all of your interacting with uh, users. One of the main key features here is customizing the portal brand styling. Now we find that companies spend a ton of money on branding and that user experience. So why don't you bring that over into the customer care and the customer portal um, setup? And that's exactly what Parature provides. We give you the ability to customize this portal that comes with your Parature department so that you're staying on the same branded look and feel of your main Parature uh, and your main sites. Um, through the portal, we have a lot of service offerings, um, soliciting customer satisfaction, uh, increasing, well, proactive customer service with live chat, the ticket management system, checking a history of all your tickets and actioning those tickets from the portal. These are all sort of cool tools that we give you through our, our Parature portal. And I wanted to hop over to ask.com and ask Eric here uh, what it's like to have self-service and to have this Parature portal. Mm -hmm. Parature comes out of the box with six or seven default templates you could use. You could just slap up on your domain and away you go. Uh, but also, they made this promise in the first conversation that I had with Parature on the phone that they wanted Parature to fit into ask.com the way we needed it to work and not the other way around. And I realized in that conversation that's how we'd been trying to do things in the way this other system wanted to work. We were trying to bend and shape what we did to fit into that box and it just wasn't working for the customer base that we have. So essentially, Parature handed me a blank canvas and a paintbrush and said, you create what it should look like and we'll build it. And that's a promise that I held them to again and again and again. And I think they regret that promise now. But they did it. At every turn, they did it. So we came up with a portal that we thought would meet the needs of our users. This tip of the week here is a central element, which is really just kind of a news ticker that we can update even more often than once a week if we want to. We can talk about new product features up there. We can talk about additions to the mobile apps that people need to know about when they're using them. Uh, if someone in England is, if there's a service issue, if there's a pipeline gets cut in England and you can't get to our site for a while, we can put that news up there as well. We use that box for everything. And also, uh, the company insisted on putting my ugly face on it because of the, well, it is, let's face it. So. Uh, because there's a, a lot of value in humanizing a brand and a brand interaction. And when a user, a customer thinks they're talking to a real person and not just some faceless entity, it changes the whole tone of the conversation. And in a lot of user testing that we have done, that has turned out to be the most noteworthy element that people pay attention to, which was very surprising to me. Then down the right rail, you see the Help Center links where you can get to our FAQs, give product feedback, contact customer support. You can talk to us on Twitter without ever leaving the portal. And down below at the very, very bottom are all of the links on social media where you can find us and get in touch with us. And people use those. those our highest click-through rates to get in touch come from that right rail. Cool. Thank you, Eric. So along that vein, I want to share some additional benefits. You know, we translate. Uh, we have the ability with 34 built-in language packs to translate your Parature portal. So you're just opening up uh, the audiences that you can serve support to. We, a lot of our customers take advantage of this idea of a mobile service center. So optimizing your portal for a mobile experience, just pulling it up on your phone and being able to submit a ticket and check FAQs is really important to our users. Uh, we also have single sign-on technology, which um, a lot of people take advantage of to pass users' credentials from their web properties into the Parature portal so we know who they are, we can track their tickets. 
And that just adds to a seamless interaction between your web properties and going up and clicking the top right maybe link that says support. And that's going to bring you over to the Paratrip portal. Um, you don't have to log in. You don't have to create an account. So a lot of our users leverage this single sign-on ability to, to provide that experience. Let me add one point also to the translation of the portal, why this is a huge money saver for us. Many Paratrip customers, including us, have presences internationally and people coming in from everywhere. And this translation of the portal is an automatic thing that detects the browser settings, language settings for a user, and can display the portal in that language, including help center files, knowledge base articles, and the actual portal branding and styling. So instead of designing a new portal every time we make a big presence in a new country, we just take our existing portal and add the language capability with one checkbox on configuration, it's done. Mm. And so we save so much time and headache just by having one checkbox to deploy. So after the portal, we have this idea of content management or the Paratrip knowledge base. So when you go out to the portal, you can come and you can see a list of FAQs, which we'll show you a screenshot later of. But really, the power of the Paratrip knowledge base is this idea of custom content. We're delivering content in a way that's going to be user friendly and readable to your end users. And that's using multimedia, so images, videos, you can all embed that into the Paratrip portal. And it's not reading anymore like a technical manual. Um, you're going out to FAQs and you're finding real answers that are going to get you what you need. Um, every article, this idea of custom publishing workflow, every article uses statuses and actions and you're able to move that through a workflow. Uh, so maybe if you have internal processes where you need marketing to vet these articles before it goes live, um, I think you should definitely take advantage of our workflow around those articles to help have an audit trail and capture that um, life cycle of an article to the point where it's being published and shown to your end users. And then finally, we have this idea of supercharged content searching. So we use keywords on the portal to get answers quickly and efficiently to your end users. So the search bar you'll find in a lot of our portals is a really prominent feature. Um, people take advantage of our search a lot. And one feature in that is the easy answer feature, which I know Eric uses a ton with. It makes me smile. <laughs> it, it really does. Because all of a sudden, this new portal, when you start typing in a question, when you have it like, how do I add my local business to your local business listings? Based on the query you're typing into the Paratrip search, articles start appearing down below, the titles of articles that are keyword driven, so that that's what deflects everybody from needing to submit a ticket into getting self-service. And that is the one feature, the easy answer feature, within two weeks of launching Paratrip drove down our inbound ticket volume 62%. In two weeks, I was scared. My job security became very <laughs> Tenuous, because where are all the people that I'm supposed to be talking to? And looked into Paratrip Analytics, oh, they're all here. They're starting off searching the knowledge base, and they're deflecting into self-service, rating it a thumbs up and going on their way and solving their problem. So that was an amazing takeaway. We were expecting a reduction in ticket volume. We were not expecting 62%. So now, then it became a game. All right, how much more can we deflect into self-service? What can we write that will get more people into self-service? And so it's been very fun. And Easy Answer continues to be a major benefit for us from Paratrip. Also, the fact that from Paratrip's advanced reporting, I can also generate a weekly report or daily or whatever that shows me all of the failed knowledge base searches that still resulted in someone having to submit a ticket. So I can see what words people are using and guess, get an idea of what they really meant when they said that, and then map those keywords to existing articles. And you're using that to grow the content. Yeah, yeah. yeah. writing new articles if need be. Or said, oh, someone said, how can I add my company to your listings? So OK, we need to add company as a trigger on this article and make it appear. And it, yeah. So we have a lot of success with that. And from an implementation standpoint, it's really, really easy to do. Easy answer, you just click a checkbox and mm -hmm. Paratrip is already doing it. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the benefits too, is just how quickly you can deploy on our software. A couple other benefits about the knowledge base is we also have the ability to filter content based on audiences. So if we know who you are, maybe you're a student 
or maybe you're a staff, we can show you FAQ content based on that role. So audience filtering is really important. We call that SLAs and Parature. And ultimately, we have this knowledge base to be able to reduce the repetitive inquiries that are coming into your system. And we're reducing the volume of customer service requests coming in. Uh, and that could be via email. That can be via phone. So this idea of self-service really, really starts at its roots with content management and having good content for your system. Now I want to take a look at uh, Ask.com's FAQ. This is a screenshot of an FAQ and sort of the user experience from there if you want to talk about mm -hmm. that here. Well, this is what a standard article looks like in our world. And one thing that I want to point out also across the very top of the Help Center are our four main product areas. Search, community, apps, toolbar, everything else. It's all up in there so that instantly when you get to the Help Center the first time, you can click on the area that you need help with and go straight in there and already start drilling down into the relevant articles for that particular product. So then when you do a search from the Search Help Center in the upper right corner, it takes you to an article when you pick one that you want to read. And as you see, the main thing here is the content of the article, which is fine. Down the right rail, you, those, all those links, those contact links persist. We keep that on every single page of the Help Center. So at any point, if you need to get in touch, you can do so. If you want to leave the self-service experience and come talk to us. And you can do that in a number of ways, as we talked about earlier. The one that's not in this shot, it's just off the shot, is live chat is another channel that we use. The other thing, though, and this is one of those promises that I made Parature keep, is I decided because personal personalized answers, instant gratification, all those things are so important. I really wanted to remove the feeling that this was powered by some kind of machine-driven system. And the one thing that always makes me mad when I'm getting support somewhere is when I have to see the word ticket. That's a bad word. Because all of a sudden, I'm entering a system. I'm no longer dealing with some kind of personal interaction. I'm now part of a system, and I'm going to get a nine-digit ticket number, and I have to wait my turn, now serving 43, and I'm a million and 12. And so who knows when I'm going to help? So I said to Parature, we need to remove this word ticket from everywhere. I don't want to see it on the portal. I don't want to see it in emails. I don't want to see ticket numbers in an email between me and a user. I don't want any boilerplate in these emails that go out from Parature. I want it to look like exactly the way like it came out of my Outlook. That's what I want users to see. So they think that I'm talking to them as a real person because I am talking to them as a real person. And what gets in the way of that are other systems that include filters and tags and code numbers and jargon and legalese and all these things that obfuscate the actual message. Our users were not responding well to that in the previous system. So Parature scratched their heads because that had never been done before. And how do you get rid of a ticket number? And what if they reply and need to reopen? And I don't really care. Figure it out. So they did. They figured it out. So now you can reply to a ticket, and it reopens the same ticket on our end. And as far as you know, you're just emailing me. That's all you need to know is that we're talking via email. Whether You don't need to know that I'm doing this in Parature. I don't want you to know that because that's not the experience I want you to have. So that talk to Eric, still have questions, talk to Eric, is a link that goes to the contact form. Now you get to me or one of my team. And talk to Eric replaced submit a ticket across the entire portal experience. And that also has greatly, dramatically improved the quality of engagement when someone right out of the gate thinks they're talking to somebody instead of to a machine. You get far better information from them. They swear a lot less. And it's just all around better. It's really great. Cool. Thanks, Eric. And I saw some questions, some hands popping up. We'll grab FAQs uh, or Q&A at the end, if you don't mind. So I want to introduce, that kind of wraps up self-service. And I want to introduce this new topic to everybody. It's multi-channel customer service. So Parature try, uh, does really well is that we, we look to be everywhere that your end users are. And we use modules to be able to do that. So we have a chat system, a ticketing system, and we provide this Parature service desk, which is the administrative panel. We want to be interacting with your users in a multi-channel world. And we want to be interacting in a way that they feel comfortable with. I know I had experience with 
Comcast where I had to figure out my router. Well, the first channel that I go to is chat. Um, and we want to offer all those modules to two users. So the first one I want to talk about in this vein of um, multi-channel support is the Paratrix Service Desk. Now the Paratrix Service Desk is our administrative panel. Um, there's no on-site installations. And really what it provides is a panel um, for around-the-clock service. It's always up. Your agents are able to go to Paratrix, log in using their email and password, and provide service to your users. In that admin panel, it creates um, a 360-degree view or a record of your users. And all of their support interactions come onto that record. So everything from their chats, their tickets, um, their social interactions. You can go and click into Paratrix and see all the history of the back and forth between your agents and your end users. So gone are the days of having a third party you know, chat system where it doesn't really maybe integrate with your ticketing system. Um, that's really the beauty of Paratrix. Everything is, is together in one panel for you to make decisions on and, and report on. The other cool thing, which I know Eric will tell you that he loves, is the mobile service desk. So this ability to pull up on your phone uh, the Paratrix admin panel and work basically from anywhere. Here's, before you get started, here's a little screenshot of the Paratrix admin panel. You can see at the top we have all of our modules laid out uh, using tabs. And then on the right hand side is a view of our mobile service desk. So pulling it up right on your phone. Now I know you do a lot of work on the go with your iPad. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The service desk that you see, the big screen, is what it looks like on a computer or even on a tablet, you get that view. And it's, the best thing about this is all the channels come into here. So you can monitor your emails through here. You can monitor live chats through here. It all happens right through here. And so without ever having to leave this experience, my team can handle all the incoming channels. And that's an incredibly handy thing. We've also customized some of the modules for our own use, which is really easy to do. We have a tab up there called Ask, which takes us to our internal JIRA ticketing system whenever I need to file a ticket internally to have a bug looked at or whatever, then I don't ever have to leave Paratrix to do that. I'm not logging into another system because single sign-on makes all this work uh, beautifully, just beautifully. And then, as Paul mentioned, one thing that made me giddy was the mobile service desk because, I don't know about you, but a lot of our users are on mobile devices and they are on the go and they are ready to get help with something right now. And the thing that in my mind was missing from our experience was being able to be really reactive about responding to them when we're on the go. And also, I've talked to many other companies who hire uh, call center teams, contact center teams. A lot of them are from a generation, a lot of these employees are from a generation that revolutionized the use of this. And they do everything with these, everything. And it's incredibly impressive. So now, anybody on my team, when they are sitting on the train going home from work, standing in line at the grocery store, commercial break on TV some night, they just pick up their phone and check what's going on and maybe answer two or three people's questions. Because it's fun to do it this way. And they, and they do it. So that, again, brings down the average response time tremendously. Didn't have to hire more people to worry about the swing shift or graveyard shift because they're always checking their devices and just answering tickets. We can do everything that we need to do in Paratrix from this just by logging into the website and the mobile service desk. I was doing it just before I got up here, in fact. I admit. But not since we started. You better not be working on tickets. I need you here. I'm being good. Um, so that kind of wraps up sort of our admin panel. And I want to talk about, too, is Paratrix Chat. Now, a lot of people are excited about this. The Paratrix Chat experience is really your first and, uh, and fast and personal interaction with your end users. Uh, we look to deploy Paratrix Chat in a way that reduces online navigation through your FAQs, um, reduces transaction abandonment rates. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with Paratrix. 
um, the parachurch had experienced. So this is a little screenshot of Eric's chat deployment here with Paracher. You can see he's interacting with a user. Do you want to talk, talk about what chat means to you guys? There's a, some research that really kept me awake at night when I was first starting my journey at ask.com. And it is that 62% of customers, the only time they have a human interaction with a brand is when it's in a customer support channel. So that begs the question then, the people who are representing your brand, these 62% of the customers, how are they representing it? The most fascinating way to engage with people live and in real time, if not on social media, is through live chat. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this was something that was important to me to add to our system, which we didn't have before, mostly because it was a shiny new toy that I wanted to play with, but also because it was an opportunity from a brand perspective to have some really great conversations with our users live on the site right now. And we've done that. We've gotten excellent product feedback through it. We've talked to people around the world with this. But the best thing of all, I think, is that it has deflected, again, more tickets. Rather than people going through and getting help and creating a ticket that then we have to respond to, we're answering a whole bunch of questions in real time and it's done. Much faster than the process of a customer submitting a ticket and then having to wait for a response. And it's just fun. It's just fun. Live chat is really fun if I have, this is the key, you have to have the right people on your team who can make this fun, who you can trust to make this fun and get away from the scripted answers because that really turns off customers. We don't use those. You just, if you log in and you talk to Amy, you talk to Amy, that's her real name. And she's sitting there um, waiting to talk to you. And it's an incredible thing, tons of brand value. Yep, and this interaction is happening on the Paratrip portal. You can initiate chats through um, proactive chat. So a little window will come up, maybe during um, a certain time frame. Uh, also initiating chat through a button click so chat with our group. And uh, your agents are in the Paratrip administrative panel answering chats um, you know, in an effective way. And I, I, want to tell, I want to tell them a secret. Tell them. How much is it going to cost, though? No, 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 no. Paratrip is rolling out this incredible feature to live chat soon that will include, it will roll in the translation abilities into live chat. So if you are speaking English and someone logs in from France and wants to chat with you in France, Bonjour. then we, oui. then uh, those of you, we yeah. oh, we. Oui, oui. <laughs> if you set this up in the preferences, saying, "All right, I'm the agent and I speak these languages only, and this is my preferred language," someone comes in the door speaking a different language, it will automatically translate in real time. So you're reading in the language you want to see, and you're typing back in the language you want to see, which is then translated back to the customer's language. So to them, you're, you're suddenly an international support team without ever having to leave this country. Definitely a powerful tool. So that's a little bit about our chat feature. Um, so I want to keep moving here into our ticket management system, or Paratrip Ticket. And really with this tool, we're helping solve complex issues um, and complex questions that our customers have. So the way tickets are created in Paratrip is a couple different channels. One is the Paratrip portal, which we talked about earlier. There's a web form where a user can go out, um, fill out their ticket, and have that come right into the Paratrip portal for your administrators to work on. The other way is via email. So this idea of email to ticket, you email support department, and it comes right into Paratrip. Um, the other way is via the service desk, so agents can create tickets right via the service desk. And typically we see that with phone calls, you know, your agent's picking up the phone, they're clicking new ticket and they're creating a ticket that way. And then lastly, through our social media channels, um, we use, I'll talk a little bit about this later, but we use a social monitor to bring chatter and, and discussion from your social media uh, into Paratrip as tickets. Now the real power and the real beauty of having these cases created in Paratrip is the ability to track and report on these tickets. So our whole analytical suite is built around giving you metrics about tickets, total tickets, response times, resolution times. And on every ticket itself, it tracks the action history. 
so you're back and forth with the user. Um, it shows the CSR's response, the user's response, and through all those channels, it's all threaded into one ticket. So you have one central area where you can see a history of your back and forth on this ticket. And really, gone are the days of sort of Outlook email. You set up an inbox to basically support your users. These inquiries come in, and you're just sort of writing them back via email. Well, that's gone. We've, we've built the Paratrooper in a way that um, pushes tickets and cases through a workflow and through statuses so things aren't falling through the cracks anymore. And you know exactly where you are on a specific ticket using these statuses. So if something needs your reply, it'll be in that specific status. So the case management is, is really, really important for easily and effectively answering uh, your customer inquiries through these different channels that we're providing. So we're flying right along. We talked about the Paratrooper self-service features with the portal, um, FAQs, we talked about multi-channel support with ticket management, with, what was the other one we talked about? Oh, chat. chat. Mm -hmm. um, the final vein we want to talk about here is the social customer service experience that Paratrooper provides. And we start off with the Paratrooper Social Monitor, which is a really powerful tool. And what this does is you can create tickets from any social media activity. So it's monitoring your Facebook channels, your fan pages. It's monitoring your uh, Twitter feeds. And the cool thing about this is those interactions are all being pulled into Paratrooper for your agents to sort of browse through and create tickets. I'm going to show you a screenshot in just a minute of what that looks like. But through the Paratrooper service desk, you're able to write back and respond um, and have that conversation go right back out into the Facebook wall. So it looks like it was posted from um, just your fan page. And it's in the back end that these tickets are being created. It's going through the analytics like we were talking about earlier. So it's this huge sort of system behind the scenes that, as Eric was alluding to earlier, all the customer really sees is just your fan page rep uh, replying back. And that's, that's a really powerful thing to be able to track that, that chatter back and forth. Um, ultimately, again, we're looking to reduce you know, email calls, um, e email calls, that's not a thing, uh, phone calls and emails uh, so through this tool. So I wanted to show you a little screenshot of what this looks like. And this is a, a fairly new feature for us. Uh, here's a shot of the admin panel that Ask uses. And we also have a mobile version as well. So did you want to talk a little bit about yeah. how you guys use this? As Paul underscored, the, the beauty of this is this is all baked <laughs> right into the Paratrooper service desk. It's, it's another tab up there at the top so that we don't have to leave this in order to go see what people are talking about on Twitter. When I started Ask in 2010, I realized pretty soon a way that uh, we weren't talking to people on Twitter when they were talking about us or to us. And there were some very cool opportunities being missed when people, a lot of people like to talk about Jeeves. Remember, ask Jeeves. They, like, they miss Jeeves. They want to talk about Jeeves. Or whatever it is. These aren't, these aren't technically support conversations, but they are opportunities to engage with people and let them know that you're listening and interested with them. The problem that we had was we looked into some uh, vendors that do specifically just social media keyword monitoring. That's all they do. So you can get reports of how many people said this about you and all, wherever. And we had problems with that because our company name is Ask. It's a very common word and was pulling in lots of stuff. There was a lot more noise and signal going on. And that, so it didn't work for us. We weren't able to stick with any of those uh, products. And so I was going about it using TweetDeck and Hootsuite and Google News Alerts and all kinds of things to try and, and beat the system and get at what people were saying. Well, then a guy at Paratrooper named Steve one day cooked up this thing and, and called me and said, do you want to try this out? Because I think we can solve your problems. He knew about my issues with the common name. So I said, I don't think you can, Steve. I, I like you a lot, but I don't think you can do this because nobody else can. And Steve said, oh, yeah? So a week later, he came back to me and showed me how this had been set up. <laughs> And Programmers love a challenge. He cracked it. So in the social media monitor, we see only the stuff 
that is filtered exactly about us. I don't know how he did it, to be honest with you, and I don't really care how he did it, because it works. And so now, without ever leaving the service desk, any of you on my team can click over here, look at a tweet, in this case, with one more click and convert it to a ticket, reply back to it, and it's done. It's filed away. I can report on it later for my Twitter engagement stats. And as far as what the person on the other end sees, as Paul said, it's just a tweet back. So there's nothing more annoying Few things are more annoying than being told when you approach a brand in one channel that you need to go to another. They hate that. And there are some products out there that do this, that some brands will just get back to you automatically and say, oh, thanks for your contact. Please go to this web page to get our phone number and call us. That happened to me just this week for my wife's new Fitbit that wasn't working right. And Fitbit <laughs> says, hey, here's a link to our phone number. So I had to go first to their portal and then to get the 800 number to call them. And I gave them kind of a bad time about that because then you shouldn't do this, guys. If you have a Twitter called Fitbit support, you need to support. So what this does for us, that's just my thing, sorry. But uh, what this does is it allows us to have all these channels right here so that you, no user ever has to leave a channel because we put them all right here. We can manage them all from right here, and it's so easy. And the other thing, as with the mobile service desk, we do this from our iPhones as well. It's a feed in the mobile service desk. We just tap over and see what's going on on Twitter or what's going on on Facebook or somewhere else. Just reply back and it's done. And it, it's, it's easier than I ever thought possible. I still smile about it. I smile about it because my team smiles about it. They love doing work. They love doing this because it's so easy and it doesn't seem like work. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. And you're really having that interaction um, mm -hmm. with your users. And that's sort of the fun part when you manage a brand. Um, you get to be a community leader and have that discussion with them. So hopefully this tool will make that easier for you guys. The other cool thing we provide is this idea of the Parature application for Facebook. Uh, this installs right into your fan page, and typically how it it works is on your fan page you have a little box in that apps section if you're familiar with the fan page as an administrator you click on the app section and it brings you right into your uh, Parature sort of help desk so from this app here's a little screenshot of it uh, I'm able to initiate a chat I'm able to browse your knowledge base and really with just a simple install Parature is doing all the heavy lifting we're all your FAQs are coming out here to the Facebook application and resolving on there. So for users who use social media a lot, which we see, um, they can interact with your support group not by going to the portal, but by going to your fan page. Um, and Paul, it looks like you still have not accepted my friend request on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, mm. how are you going to call me out on mm. that? Uh, this next view here is our FAQ view. So it shows sort of the title, the number of views, and uh, we definitely get a lot of use out of this, out of this application. Did you want to add anything to that? So that sort of wraps up the social side of the house. Uh, we talked about self-service. We talked about multi-channel support, and sort of finally, Parature Social. So, um, kind of at the end here, thanks for joining us. Uh, we can definitely take, let's see how much time we have. We have, uh, we have about 15 minutes for a Q&A. I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions. And if you could come up to the mic so you get onto the recording, that's, uh, if, that'd be great. If, if not, we'll restate the question if we can hear you. Yes, sir. Hi there, quick question. You mentioned sure. uh, that this is all great, it all works together so you don't have any third party products to access it through. However, this is a lot of people from CRM, so you guys are the third party product. So how is it going to link back to CRM to generate the tickets back in CRM? Can you talk about how that's going to work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we definitely have some classes uh, later in the day to help better answer that question. Uh, I'm sorry to deflect it a little bit, but uh, we definitely have our product management team who can point you in the right direction for that. Does Comcast use Parature? Um, <laughs> that would be amazing. You know, 
Comcast has one of the worst customer service records. <laughs> Sorry to call them out like that. Is there any Comcast people here? Um, I think they're the people who just left. <laughs> but um, I know I've had a lot of interactions with them. He's saying they have a lawsuit against them uh, because of the chat feature. I have, um, I've experienced Comcast chat. I felt that same frustration that it just shouldn't be like this. And uh, Comcast could use Parature because one of the features that uh, we did not mention here, but Parature has been designed to be so fully scalable, starting from a small to a huge enterprise. It's grown with us beautifully every step of the way. And before well, you... I should get another freebie for that. Okay, sure. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just toss it in real quick. So uh, a lot of times we're asked to, in a, in a support portal, to supply additional information. For instance, uh, invoices out of an ERP solution, that kind of thing. Is that possible with your portal to be able to access data from within their network? So with a lot of uh, customizations we've done, we have a full API suite. Uh, to be able to pull information in and out of Parature. Um, one of the ways we've utilized something like that is with GSU, Georgia State University. We have a widget on the ticket form that pulls in their banner information. Now, banner is their customer or their student record information. So that's everything from their GPA, if they have any holes in their accounts, uh, their name. And all that information is being pulled out via web service, and it's a read-only uh, display on Parature tickets, so an agent has all that information right there but to be able the to talk. But client download it from the web portal that they're using for their uh, knowledge base search? So download what specifically? Like an invoice or an order or a back order, those kinds of things. So that's definitely the CRM portion. Yes. Uh, what we do very well is more of the customer interaction and the customer support, the customer so, self-service. Well, I would also point out that this deal just closed. Microsoft just bought Parature at the end of January. Oh, I know. So it's very new. And based on a couple of conversations I've had, it sounds like there's tons of plans to integrate Dynamics and vice versa. And they're going to continue working on that and figure out where all these opportunities are. Yes, and, and just one, one point to add on that as well. So we do have this a is ben, session. by the way. Yes, thank Would you. you. Like so I'm, I'm Ben, <laughs> part of Microsoft. Uh, so we do have a session at 5 o'clock tomorrow on the kind of integrated Parature and Dynamic CRM story. So that's uh, 5 o'clock, I, I believe, in room B206. But I, I double check the monitors on that. Uh, so we'll have a whole hour where we can kind of talk about those scenarios that we can support today, as well as the ones that we're looking at supporting going into the future. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate that. Uh, let's come over here. This gentleman was waiting. Yeah, I don't know if you touched on this or not, but do you have any kind of out-of-the-box capability to group on the self-service portal sort of users with an organization and filter content based on maybe what a client might have purchased or things like that? Yeah, that's. Um, we have this idea of products. So you can associate a product to an individual. And now I'm filtering content based on what you own. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, uh, a Dell Latitude, and we know that about you with this record that you keep in Parature, you're only going to see articles around that specific product, or maybe articles with no products. So it's a certain configuration that we have with the Parature system. And that's around uh, resolving content based on audiences and, and actually this idea of products, which I didn't mention. And you have some sort of organizational grouping, sort of the concept of a yep. company owning individuals? So like in the CRM portion of Parature, we have accounts and customers. Okay. And accounts is a, a grouping of customers. Um, so all the customers underneath that account inherit the, the SLA and the audience of the account level. Um, so you can easily filter content based on that, that higher group, so grouping those individuals. Yep. All right, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Excuse me. Um, I came in a little late, so you may have already covered this. Do sure. you have the concept of a UID for customers that need to be entitled before they can actually open up a ticket? So explain that a little bit more. So, when you say UID. so or user identification okay. or yep. a contract number or something like that prior yep. to them actually getting to one of the agents behind Parature. Definitely. So uh, we have a couple unique identifiers that we can sit, set in Parature, and that's the username. So like maybe a number or a specific username, and then we also have email. Um, so it's through either those identifiers and a password that we're able to, uh, using our login, um, sign them into the Parature portal. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the single sign-on capability. 
So if you want to control the authentication on your system and have that user passed right into the Paratrip portal, we just get a little information about that user and it matches a record on the Paratrip side and we know exactly who they are. Okay, so we could set up a lookup table that says these guys have a contract that's valid, these don't, do something separately. Yep. Perfect, yep. thank you. And what's great is you can toggle the support features that they get. So maybe the people who have a contract, they can submit a, a ticket to your group. Whereas the people who don't, they don't have that capability quite yet until they maybe upgrade plans. So that's through our SLA feature. So we have a uh, question you, in the middle. <clears throat> yeah, when you talk about tickets, uh, mm -hmm. and you talked about Dell Latitude, right? Um, if I have an Inspiron, maybe I want to ask these five questions. If I have a Latitude, I have three other questions I want to ask. Do your, does your ticketing allow for unique categorization of ticket based on product, based on uh, you know yep. some other question? Definitely. So we have a static field that shows that I own a specific product and it toggles. It's an automatically generated field that I can pick what product I own and what what this inquiry is about. Okay. Um, and then we have a customizable ticket form where uh, your Paratrip admin can go in and basically set up any kind of field that they want. So any kind of category field, drop down field, text area field, you can customize the look and feel of that form to get all the information you want to help tag and categorize these tickets coming in. And that's really gonna help you keep organized um, and help route those requests to different areas in the system, different queues. Real quick second question, sure. any plans you can share on Yammer integration for people doing private social networks? Ooh, Yammer integration. Um, I don't have a whole lot of information on that. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This gentleman over here. Uh, this being a SaaS solution, I mean, you talked a lot about uh, Ask.com success through a lot of customization. It's not clear to me, mm -hmm. you know, is Patcher doing the customization or the customer is doing the customization? I mean, going Paratrip forward. Paratrip did it all. So that, that that's the, raises the concern. So going forward, mm -hmm. your business model, how is it going to work? Are the customers going to be able to do the customizations that made mm -hmm. Ask.com successful in using your product? Or the customers are going to rely on Paratrip, mm -hmm. Microsoft, um, to be successful in using your product? That's a, that's a great question. Um, I would say that Paratrip takes a lot of time in considering that fact. And what we've done is you know, we have a setup tab which goes into configurations. Um, that basically controls everything around the look and feel of your portal, the, the workflow around your ticketing system, the workflow around your knowledge base, um, turning features off and on. So it's, it's through those mechanisms that we give a lot of controls to our, our clients. It's really they engage with us when they want to take it sort of to the next level. So we want to empower you with the ability to, to do that stuff yourself. So typically, if you have web resources or technical resources, you can easily accomplish that without having to interact with us. Um, it's just simply through configurations in the setup tab or the admin panel. Are you talking about the actual look and feel or the actual configuration of how it works? Uh, it could or be both. I mean, clearly look and feel from a customer experience standpoint is paramount, but also some you know, technology uh, underneath, you know, depending yeah. on how you want to extend your business objects or business rules, whatever the case may be. A quick follow-up question. I noticed sure. that you guys support a lot of public sector customers, yeah, definitely. Uh, particularly the federal, federal government. Um, this being a SaaS solution, again, what kind of security model do you mm -hmm. support? Mm -hmm. uh, are you FISMA moderate compliant, or mm -hmm. what kind of compliance you support today? Yeah, that's a great question, and one that would be better served with our uh, security group. So we have two uh, security personnel who deal exactly with that um, to get our accreditations. Um, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, these government agencies are working with us and they want to make sure that their data is secure and it's going through the right uh, audits and we have the right certifications. Um, I know we've gone through that process with Business USA and uh, our Social Security Administration because all those inquiries are being sort of stored in Paratrip and we're actually forwarding them out to different groups. So we do have those accreditations. What those are, uh, maybe you can send me uh, your email. I can okay. actually get you the specifics. So, Thank you. And just Thank to follow you. up on your first question a little bit, we had the option. We could have built the design of the portal ourselves. But we decided to let Paratrip do it because they're the experts, for one thing. And our entire design team was very busy with several other projects at the time that we didn't want to delay rolling out Paratrip because they couldn't work on My Help Center right now. 
but they certainly, certainly could have shipped over Parrot or some HTML files and said put it up, or put it up ourselves for that matter. So it was very flexible to whatever we wanted to do. Great. And we, I'll come over here, then I'll come to the middle, that's okay. Uh, sir? So in the multi-channel customer service, yep. um, I noticed that you didn't talk about voice, which I know everybody wants to deflect voice calls away from um, the service group. But how do you handle it, uh, whether through third parties or, yeah. and if you do, which parties do you integrate with? So we have done some IVR integrations, uh, I believe with Angel. Uh, have you heard of that? Uh, yeah, but that's on the self-service. What about, I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. as you know, in customer service, the number one channel as of today is still, people are still calling in, right? Mm -hmm. So when people pick up the phone and call, you know, from a service agent standpoint, how do they handle it? Or do they? Yep, yep, so um, you pick up the phone. Uh, typically what they're doing is they're in the Paratrue admin panel and they're creating tickets while they're on the phone with that individual. So there's no integration between the two? There are sometimes, it depends on uh, the customer and, and that integration. Uh, we are capable of doing that through our APIs. So we leave a little widget space on the ticket um, to be able to pull information about that call, who's calling, um, and even just open up that ticket with that user right away. Um, I know for our support team, you can hit a button and leave a message um, if there's no agents available. And that ticket with the uh, voicemail is actually posted as an attachment on the Paratrue ticket. So this integration here is, if there's no agents, it's, it's uh, creating that ticket um, and, and storing it for an agent to, to look at later. So there's a lot of definitely cool stuff we can do, but it, it does take some integration work. Indiana sure. State University is a Paratrue customer that actually does this. They, I forget which call vendor they use, but they have an API, so when the phone rings, it gets routed to someone, and then up on the screen, in Paratrue, comes all the caller ID information right. and the ability to click and turn that into a customer record. And it starts recording the call, whatever else you want to do. So, so basically, it's done through API integration, yeah. but you don't have out-of-the-box integration Correct. to third parties. Yep. Got it. And in the middle here? Yep. Um, you kind of mentioned that you can grow this from a small company to a large company. That means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Hmm. So um, how big do you think a company needs to be before you know, the, the price of this would actually fit the hmm. value coming back? So you know, what is that kind of entry level that, not, not necessarily dollars if that's not what you want to give, but just size of company and situation that you're expecting to be entry point? Uh, and then what is your sweet spot from a, just you know, hmm. really uh, targeting what, what you're expecting your primary customers to look like? Yeah, it's definitely a, a conversation to have with our, um, our sales team to, to price a model that's going to fit your sort of growth. But that's sort of the beauty with software as a service company. You know, we, we have a lot of capability um, for you to, to start small and eventually sort of grow up. So from a technical aspect, uh, with our Social Security Administration, we're basically supporting 5 million, I think, page views a day on our Paratrue portal. Uh, How about the small end, though? I mean, like, is a company end. with one person in their support department going to be able to deal with this? The answer is yes. And let me tell you from our perspective, uh, we, the previous system we were using charged by the page view in the knowledge base. And with the knowledge base that wasn't working, page views were astronomically high, and the cost was astronomically high for this service that very few of us were using at the time. Uh, Paratrue's pricing model is per user, not by page view. So if you only have one person on your team, you're going to pay this much, and if you add someone, you're going to pay a little more. You're going to pay a little more as you grow your team. But because of Paratrue's capabilities, you're not growing your team nearly as fast, so you're not spending really much. When we switched to Paratrue, our annual spend on the software went down 80%, and we didn't have to hire any more people at that time. So that's why I say it's absolutely scalable with a small team and can grow. It's, it's not cost prohibitive, which I don't, I, to be honest, when they quoted me the price on the phone, I thought there was a mistake. And my boss, who was on the call with me, but in a different state, IM'd me and she said, did I hear that right? I said, there must be a catch. So she had to leave the call and I said to Paratrue, what's the catch? How can you be that affordable? 
and uh, there would there shouldn't be a lot of costs associated because that's their value system. They don't, they, Paratrooper gets it and they run their company the way that we try to run ours in terms of customer service. They get it. That's what drew me to their website. It's different from every other vendor I looked at. They get it and their pricing absolutely backed that up. It's ridiculous and you definitely get every dollar you spend. And then one little add on. Have you done any work with Paratrooper with like remote groups in the same large company so that they're actually sort of, you know, the internal support people, like in more of an IT situation where your actually employees are your customers, or has mm -hmm. it really only been mm. external? Yeah, definitely. We've done internal IT groups as well. Um, we kind of, what's the phrase? We eat our own dog food? We eat our own dog food. <laughs> um, From Silicon Valley tech phrase there for you. Our, uh, <laughs> our internal IT team uses Parachur. Uh, for our internal support, so it's definitely, definitely doable. I'm trying to think of a customer. Indiana U does it. They do all their student and faculty ticketing, support ticketing through Parachure. Yep. And there's two other, I know, two other companies I just talked to last week at the Parachure user conference who do this strictly for internal. I think Warner Brothers might be one. I, if I remember right, it's all through their internal people filing tickets. And I believe NASA does as well. Thank you. Thanks. I'll show them over here, and then I'll come over. Do you have some kind of, oops, sorry. Do you have some kind of um, feature request and voting system? So built in. Yes. So we have integrated with uh, Share Ideas. Are you familiar with that system? No. We actually use it on our portal as well. It's this ability uh, to interact directly with our product management team is how we use it. So you can submit an idea and have that idea come to the front page and people can vote that up and to get more priority and more visibility on that idea. Uh, so we've used third party systems like, like Share Ideas for that. Sense. So you have an integration with them? Is, is that what you're saying or? Uh, they, we've incorporated, incorporated them into our website but not specifically with the Parachur suite. Okay. Is there an integration? Yeah. All right, thanks. Yep. Do you, do you have today or on the roadmap co-browse features? Co-browse features. To tell me a little bit more about uh, this. An agent would be able to see the desktop of the end user and navigate with them. Uh, not at this time, no. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. One that was question. fun. One more um, question, I think. Oh, one, one more. Last question. Sure, um, sure. On the chat, you showed some screenshots. Yep. Can the agent uh, support multiple chats at the same time through your admin panel? Yes. Definitely. Uh, they list on the left-hand side, and you can easily click in and out of chats with different users. So it sort of lines up sort of like a chat window uh, from the agent's to, perspective. Are they able to see uh, simultaneously, I mean, yeah. multiple chats? Okay. Yeah. And right. the agent can set, or I can set, how many chats each person can have at one time. So when you get to 10, you're not going to get any more until you finish one, or whatever it is. All right, thank you. So if you have more questions, you want to come grab me? Uh, sure. Yeah, come grab me. Uh, I just wanted to wrap up a little bit. Thanks for, for joining us, for sure. If you want to leave our feedback, here's the instructions on how to do that. So thank you, guys. It was a pleasure.